my name is Deanne Treasure Kellogg, and today I'm reading to you chapter 22 from the book Collective Minds from the series The White Wizard of Haftar. It is entitled Eleanor and the Dragons. Eleanor, remember, is the ship, and we left off last time with there being two dragons attacking the ship, and then a third one was coming into view means pretty much doom for the ship three dragons can a ship handle three dragons anyway so let's get on with the story remember like subscribe share with your friends Eleanor and the Dragons Prevailing westerly winds is a blessing that keeps the smoke from their lungs. The rain washes the blood from the top deck into the hole leading to the main deck. The waves, too, crash on the sides, extinguishing flames, pouring water into the hole. The crew is a quarter down of what it once was. Exhausted faces are seeking hope from the rainy. She appears determined. Her black braid catches in the air, whirling, and her tapered coat beads with water. Her face and stance stands mighty against the harsh motions and waves that crash on board. She has to split her crew. Some she des designates to filter out the water, and the others are to combat. She gives no prep talk but they draw upon her confidence. They go about their task with reinforced resolve. The half Dorians, of course, are amongst the fighting force, having been very successful in subduing the amounts of fire attacks. Very important, that. Maple is emerging from the partially flooded deck, catching sight of the two dragons. The wind whips her long brown hair around her face. Standing fixed takes great effort. Fastening another trap again seems a monstrous task, but she is determined. She thinks she can repair the net, perhaps this time entangle one of them in the sea instead of the boat. She sets to work immediately, with Chicheyu gladly assisting the men with the water. Luckily, they have removed the net from the pole before the dragon ripped down, but the tree was not so fortunate. She will also have to regrow the tree, and the dragons are nearly upon them. If only there were two builders, she considers, daunted by her task. If only I were as good as Venter and Sumar. Her hands tremble, and her ears burn as she sings softly with the sound of the approaching dragons in the background. Her heart pounds faster at the prospect. Elm notices Maple on the deck. His stomach clenches and knots. The violent rocking of the ship in the wind, slapping rain in his face, does not faze him. His fear is not for himself. He keeps his eyes upon the dragons while inching closer to Maple. In each step is a prayer that the dragons somehow fail to notice her, mending the net that has served as their torment. Elm was assigned to Maple before his training was complete. Through the years they have grown together, their bond long-lasting. Thus it is true for most builders and protectors. Her bravery brings him much angst against 
his love for her. Moments as these, there is much resentment that he fights against. Honorable, he will not consider wavering from his duty. He trusts in his superior skills. The larger dragon instantly notices the net that held him captive. The pain still stings and burns. Seeing the small creature fiddling with it causes a great urge to burn what he sees. He wants all of the insubordinate creatures to burn and scream. How dare these puny things challenge me, he thinks vexatious. I should be their god, he considers. They will die for their insubordinate deeds. He locks his sight on the little thing and lets his outrage loose. The winds, waves, and the two dragons are relentless. All aboard are thinking of nothing more than survival when Wolfland blows his horn again. Another dragon! He shouts from his perch. Fight, Java, what that? Uraini shouts. She is by the catapult. She takes a shot, then turns to view the third dragon. Hell is falling upon us! Get the baby dragon! She orders Kelat, who is orchestrating the spearmen and crossbows. If they want him, they can have him! Worry is expressed in her features. She fumbles to reload the catapult. No! Leo shouts. Sorry, Irene returns. We can't win this. We must save ourselves, and by all means possible. Irene is not a malicious sort. She rather likes the dragon, but she's a survivor to the core. Truthfully, Few, if any, will survive if Eleanor goes down. Keen touches Leo's shoulder, rising and falling rapidly from heavy breathing. You are the best shot, he tells her. We're, you're the dragon slayer. Let me handle Kelat. Leo shakes her head, accepting his proposal. Her blood turns as she draws more arrows from the quiver at her hip. She draws back, marking the dragons following them, then leaves. She shoots more desperation, more fury, and with more drive. The crew is trembling with wide eyes, murmuring amongst themselves. Keen, meanwhile, strolls towards the enormous hundred man, erect with sure steps. Some of the worried men motion as if they're going to restrain the keen. Bikilat shakes his head in disapproval, disallowing. The men keep at the task warily, witnessing the chaotic events before them. Kilat, unsheathed, unthreatened by the little elf, reaching his shoulders, keen opens his mouth to talk at his approach. But Kilat instantly swings a punch that he has been saving since he heard Keen's words and took offense. Kilat's powerful punches do not meet its mark, enticing frustration. Keen ducks and dodges as Kilat continues to cast blows one after the other. The blows first steam with surety, then they become more wild and desperate as he goes on. They dance around in this way a few minutes, with Keen surveying his hips. Keen did hold his hand out, as if attempting to stop a punch. It fails. The blow sends jolting pain and burning throughout Keen's hand and arm. At the moment, Keen's other hand leans in to grip Kellogg's extended arm by the tri- triceps near the armpit. Keen's leg on the other side also goes in behind Kellat's extended leg. Keen then leans into his 
shoulder, performing with some something resembling a pigeon stretch, extending hyperextending Kilat's knee. Keen continues up Kilat's midsection, pressing his shoulder under his chin. Kilat winces in pain with great athleticism and speed. King swings himself up and brings his knee down into Kilat's face. Rising carefully, Keen stands over Kilat's still form with a grin. We practice wrestling bears back home. I am the bear wrestling champion, he mentions softly. Keen then faces races to warn Tucheyu and stands guard of him. His sword is now unsheathed, warning anyone who would challenge him. But the crew does not leave their post. Momentarily, a few Tundran look, considering attacking, but none do. Their reasons are their own. As the waves rise, so does the hysteria. Some men are standing to fight where others race for animal bladders. If you jump ship now, Urani warns them angrily, you're over. Over for good. Havarti fight a Jataratan Zabada! Eleanor's chaos is easy pickings for the two dragons blazing their fire. The ice kiss at the bow, and the older male at the midsection targets the rope. Maple sees a dark shadow and hears the flapping wings hovering. She realizes what peril it entails. The net is loose, and she is with it, having no time to escape her fate. She closes her eyes and grows. Her voice shakes nearly as violent as her limbs. Fire has always been her worst fear. She creates wood resistant to flames, but the direct fire, she is not so sure. Resistant wood is still wood, and wood burns, she considers. Tears roll over her cheeks. Elm's heart sinks, seeing the monstrous beast poised over Maple. Momentarily debating if running to her or shooting it, he resolves, however, that he will not return to half jaw without it. He does both. In long strides, his legs stretch and his arrows fly. Leof is next to Nigella. I get the left eye, you get the right, she coordinates. Nigella nods. Both are in sync. Both are aware of Nay Maple. The dragon screams seconds later. His flames go wild as it holds one eye. Wolfund and his perch is flung across the ship as the entire post is smashed from the violent thrashing of the mad beast. Leo follows close with her recurve notched. When the shot presents itself, she shoots her arrows again, targeting the right eye. The dragon plops on the ship with brevity screaming. He rises, but not without casting huge waves and cracks to Eleanor. The ship state is already weakened. The blister men remain taking advantage of his retreat. Neiskis is busy torturing the men on the bow. Their shrieks resound clear through the storm, further terrorizing the crew. The wood is giving way to her heat and flames. The white dragon, the third dragon, is now in range as their final doom. Many men brace for death. Some have clamped their eyes shut, while others stare in amazement as the white dragon sinks its teeth into the sail, the tail of the blue. The blue is Neiskis. They marvel, reveal, re relieved that the white yanks Neiskis' tail, feverishly dragging her away from the ship. Neiskis roars hysterically. Uranie spins the catapult towards, prepping to take her shot when Leuf grips her shoulders. Wait! 
Jiraimi whirls around, pressing a dagger to Liu's gut. Jiraimi's eyes are wild. This is my ship, she snarls. I give the orders unless you want me to gut you. Liu glares down, then back at Jiraimi with daring eyes. Don't you see? Liu explains. The white one is attacking the blue. And I'm attacking them both at the same time. Havarti! That could be to cut him. Liu contends in a frantic tone. Her eyes are penetrating. What? Jiraimi halts, shifting her demeanor. She returns the dagger and retrieves her spyglass at once. Can she do that? Urani asks in a softer tone. Indeed, Urani spies remnants of silk strips on the white dragon. Her mouth falls ajar. Leo relaxes. I have seen her become a net and jar, and her cousin claims to have seen her fly with dragon wings. But are you sure? Urani questions, indignant. Just wait, please, Leo pleads. All right, Urani reluctantly agrees. She too would like for Jukunum to have survived the awful storm. You had better be right. If my ship goes down, I'll order my crew to kill you first. Leof is taken aback, not expecting those harsh words. Uh, how considerate of you, she replies. Better than long hours of sun-baked pruding, dehydrating, and the slow, drawn-out death adrift, Urani spits. Then I should be grateful, Leaf mutters. Urani spins. Kill the dragon in the water and leave the others, she orders her crew. She heaves the catapult towards the blinded dragon and takes aim. How many spears does it take to kill one of these things? I'm already... She pulls the lever. I am so glad that you enjoyed that bit. Remember, like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Books are available ebook, paperback, Barnes and Noble, Ingram, and Amazon. So get you a copy. And until next time, bye bye.